All right, Alge 2, we take our 5, 4, which is our dividing polynomials, and we take it a step further, okay, when we go to uh, section 5, 5. Remember, you can always go to the website, go to notes, okay, click the little notes, and here they're going to have our chapter 5 notes, and so today we're like doing 5, 5. So you would click that 5, 5, and your notes would come out. You could print them out, or you could even get those... Uh, um, write on these notes and then end up saving them and having it all digitally. How sweet would that be? The only bad thing of having it digitally is if you wanted to look at them in class, it might be a little bit difficult. All right, but here we go. Here's my notes for 5-5, five, five, which our main objective is going to be to solve equations using the rational root theorem. Well, what the heck is the rational root theorem, Mr. T? Well, here it is right here. It's pretty involved, okay? So you don't have to write this down because if you printed it off, it's right there on our note sheet. All right. The rational root theorem means we want to find the possible. That's important right there. The possible rational roots. Now, roots, uh, roots is really the same thing as saying zeros or solutions. OK, so we want to find the roots, the zeros, the solutions of a rational function. And in order to do that, we're going to list the factors of the constant up above in the numerator and the factors of the lead coefficient in the denominator. Well, what the heck would that mean? Well, let's say a question on your next quiz said, what are the possible rational roots of this particular, that'd be a cubic polynomial? Okay, the way we find, and remember, this is just the possible answers. But the possible answers would be the factors of your constant, and the constant's that guy with no X on it, and those factors would be, how do you get six? Six times one, negative six times negative one, two times three, negative two times negative three. So you have to list all of those guys out, okay? And all of those guys go in our numerator, all right? And then you say, what are the factors of the leading coefficient? Well, this one's nice because the leading coefficient is eg, which is one. And so really the only coefficients there, the only possibility is one is one times one or negative one times negative one. So there you go. And then the way you get the actual, all the possible rational roots is you do one divided by one is one. Two divided by one is two. Three divided by one is three. Six divided by one is six. And it can get actually much more involved than that, okay? And then we take it a step further and we actually find out which one of these guys work. Now it only works if those possible rational roots give us a remainder of zero, right? And we kind of did that when we did our synthetic and our long division, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and see how this pertains to an actual problem that we would have on a test or quiz. It says, what are the rational roots? It doesn't say the possible ones. It says, what are the rational roots? So we're gonna break this up in kind of two categories, okay? Here's category one, the way I get this guy started. I first have to find the possible, okay, possible rational roots. So we actually first want to find out what qualifies. What that, because if I don't know what qualifies, I, I'm, it's like I'm running around with my head chopped off, right? I've got to find out what could actually be possibility. And to do that, we use that rational root theorem. Well, what's the rational root theorem? Remember, um, it's your constant, 5. And then we have to have all the factor of 5. But I don't know about you, but there's only one way to get 5. That would be plus or minus five times plus or minus one, because five times one is five and negative five times negative one is positive five, okay? And remember, those go on the top, okay? And usually, you know what? It's better to list it from the lowest to the highest, okay? And then divided by uh, that guy. Now, it's not just a one, it's a two this time. Well, what are the possible factors of two? One times two, Mr. T. So we got plus or minus one, plus or minus two. This time I've got two things on the bottom. Okay, how do I deal with it if I have two things on the bottom? So now we're gonna, I'm just gonna start. These are all my possibilities. Now, if you remember from the previous page, the way that I find all the possibilities is I do a little division. Okay, I do one divided by one. So it's plus or minus one. And you just put the plus or minus in front, okay? Next is you gotta do one divided by two, plus or minus one half. Ooh, that's a fraction, yup, yup. 
Okay. Once you've shared that one with both of those down there, that guy's done. It's giving you all your possibilities. Okay. But then you go to the next guy, five divided by one plus or minus five. That guy's done with the one. And then five divided by two. Oh, yuck. Another fraction. So those are my possibilities. There's actually eight of them, right? There's actually eight because you have a positive, a positive and a negative for each possible rational root. Now, whew, this is where this gets fun, but unfortunately could take a lot of work. Okay, now we have to actually find all the, pos the rational roots. We have to find out what actually works. And there's a couple of ways to do this. We just learned synthetic division, so we are going to use synthetic division. Okay, so now we're going to use synthetic division. And if we get, remember, we kind of introduced this last lesson. If we get zero as a remainder, it's called a factor. And that can help me finish this bad boy out. So let's do it. Let's try one. Let's try to see if one is an actual rational root. All right, so we go one, and then we just do synthetic division. Okay, that's it. And remember, this is nice and easy. Let's drop that two. Two times one is two. Combine one, two, ooh, three, and then uh, three, and that's eight. No way, Jose, no thank you. Darn it. So I got to try something else. I don't know about you, but I don't like fractions. So I'm hoping I don't have to go to fractions. All right, so that guy's no good. So let's go. Let's try negative one. All right, and we can do synthetic division with that. All right, let's see, drop that two. That'd be negative two, that'd be negative three, that'd be three, that'd be five, that'd be negative five, that'd be zero. Sweet! That means this guy right there is a rational root. Okay, now when I get zero as a remainder, all right, I want to write down what this polynomial is right here. And I want to write down what that factor is right there, okay? So, so far, if I take this and I divide, I could get this. If negative 1 was a 0, that means it would be x plus 1. Do you kind of remember that? Remember, it's kind of like going backwards with that synthetic division. Come with your questions if I lost you there. But since negative 1 would make this a 0, that's why it's a 0 or a rational root. Remember, root and 0 mean the same thing. And then this here would mean it would be a 5, and then that would be an x, and then that would be an x squared. So it would be 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. Okay? And remember, what we're really trying to do is find out when it's equal to 0. Okay, so this first guy's done. That's nice and easy, jap on easy. But you know what? I don't really have to do this because I already verified it was a zero when I did my synthetic division. But I do have to do this piece right here. Now, I don't know about you, but that looks factorable, doesn't it? Well, if it's factorable, I got to do a little bit of side work. And oh my gosh, am I running out of space? But I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do a little x side work. Two times five is 10. Uh, negative three goes there. What works? Well, that's easy, Mr. T. It's a 5 and a negative 2. That gives me what the what? Well, that's not going to work out because I need it to be a negative 3. Okay, so let's see here. What else would work? A negative 5 and a 2, but that's not going to work because I need it to be positive 10. So what the heck is going to give me a positive 10? I don't think anything else works, class. And if nothing else works, what do we need to do? We need to make sure we do. Uh, our quadratic formula, All right? Now, this problem just asks for rational roots. So what that means is if you come to this piece right here and that is not factorable, okay, that means the other guys are not rational roots. So I would be done, and the only guy that works here is a negative 1. Now, if this worked out, and it sure looked like it was going to work out for me, I thought that was going to be a negative and that would be a positive, but it doesn't work out because I have to get a positive 10 as my answer. Okay, guys, does that kind of make sense? Um, so I'm done. And the only rational root that works for this one is negative one. All right, let's see if, let's go to our next one. Ooh, that was a lot to take in. I thought we were going to be able to keep on factoring, but no, no. All right, and we will have to take these further and do some quadratic equation stuff for problems like that when we find out all the solutions. But the important thing that we're doing right now in uh, 
Section 5.5 five is this very important word that says rational. And if it's rational, they all have to work out very pretty without the quadratic formula. Okay. All right. Let's keep on going. Once again, I got two pieces here. Okay. I've got my possible, possible rational roots. Are ours? Okay. Possible are ours. Now, how do I get the possibilities? Well, you take your constant and it's going to be plus or minus two. Well, well, I'm going to write two. Now, how do you get two? Well, that's a plus or minus one times a plus or minus two. Woo! But look at this stuff. All right. Now I got a 15. Well, there's a lot of ways to get 15, right? You got plus or minus one. You got plus or minus 15. I'm writing it over there because I want to go in order because I know there's also a three times a five. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of stuff going on there. So now I got to do a plus or minus one, a plus or minus two all over a plus or minus one, plus or minus three, plus or minus five, plus or minus 15. Come on, Mr. T, you cannot be serious. Yes, I am. All right. So what are the possibilities? Well, remember you do one divided by one. It's my first possibility. One divided by three. Second possibilities. One divided by five for real. Oh, what the heck? That'd be one third. That'd be one fifth. Those are gross. That's my pen wigged out on me. It's so gross. One, that'd be plus or minus one over 15. I would not want to do a synthetic division with those. Once that one is done, he's done. Then I go to the two plus or minus two, two divided by three plus or minus two thirds plus or minus two fifths and plus or minus two fifteenths. So that means potentially for this one, one, two, oh my, eh, there's eight of those guys, which really means there's 16. No way. Right, so we're just going to have to hope and pray that one of these guys work out because those are nice numbers, right? All right. Whew. Let's see. What, what can I maybe try that would maybe get me a little lucky ducky in this case? I'm going to try with, I'm going to go with a two. I'm going to try two and see if it works out. Remember at home, when does it work out? Mr. T, it works out if you get a remainder of zero. Pray, please, 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 give me a zero. Let's see, 15. Okay, 15 times two is 30. That's a negative two. Ne that's a negative four. That's a negative one. Negative. Yes, first try done, so. First try done. Uh, whew. And I didn't even have to use a fraction. All right, so what does that mean? First try done. That means that's a factor. So I could rewrite this as x minus 2, right? If it's a factor, it's a 0, it's a root. So its factor makes it a 0. So 2, if I put a 2 in there for x, it would make it a 0. And then I have to rewrite this thing right here, remainder. And then remember, it would be no x, x, x squared. So it would be 15x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. All right, so looks like I could maybe keep on going. All right, so let's do my little sweet little purple purples. And let's see if we can keep on going if we get rational. 15 times negative 1 is negative 15. And then there's a negative 2 right there, right? We're going to factor this. Does anything work? A 5 and a negative 3. Oh, sweet. That does equal negative 15, but it equals a positive 2. So we flip-flop those two guys. That works out. Now, what do we do when I get something that works out? Well, let's keep on going, class. Now, this guy's done right? I mean, I can easily solve that. We already did actually remember. So two was a rational root. What else is a rational root? Now, since this works out over here, I'm going to get some more rational roots. Remember, you write down the first guy, you write down the last guy. And instead of this guy in the middle, we're going to put in a negative five X and a, hold on. I think I got a phone call. All right, sorry, class, here we go. Let's keep it going. All right, so then I, I write down, remember, negative 2x, I get by that negative 5 and that positive tree, okay? And then we factored, remember, we group, groupity group, separated by the plus sign. So what's common with these two guys is a 5 and an x. And if I factor that out, I get a 3x minus a ichi. Remember, five, negative 5x divided by... 5x is negative 1. When we factor, we divide. Remember, plus. Now, there is nothing in common there. But if there's nothing in common, there's always something in common. Ichi, ichi. Right? There's always a 1. Okay, 3x minus 1. And then remember, it's still always equal to z all. And then, oh, sweetie sweets, we got ichi, 1, and 2 terms. What's common goes in the first guy, right? Spling, spling. 
and then we get a 5x plus 1 is equal to 0. And then I do my little my, my little solve each one of those guys. Let's go to greenies again. I'm going to come over here. So you get 3x minus 1 equals 0. You're going to add a 1 on both sides. Divide by that guy. I get 1 third. Oh, 1 third. How about that? It was not only a possibility, it was legit. And then I got my other one. Who am I running out of space? I get 5x plus 1 equals 0. Uh, you subtract the 1, and then you divide by the 5, and I get negative 1 fifth. Was that a possibility? It was. So isn't that interesting? Out of all those possibilities, three dudes worked. What worked? That 2, that 1 third, and that negative 1 fifth. I don't know about you, but that was kind of fun. And that... Those are all rational roots. Remember, the difference between this one we just did right now and the one that we did earlier is the one, the first one, problem one that we did when we got to our quadratic, it was not factorable, which means those are not rational roots. This one here, it was factorable, so I actually had three rational roots, okay? And we knew the possibilities from the beginning because I used the rational root theorem to find those possibilities. All right, hopefully we can get my screen here uh, to erase. Booyah, perfect timing. Uh, let's see, we have this, or all the rest, yeah. Okay, okay, let's just do one more. Okay, and then we're gonna call it a day. That's a video. This can be kind of really tough stuff for students to grasp. So let's see if you got it. All right, so remember, very first thing we do, we kind of have two pieces here. We first find the possible. And people are going to say, do I really have to do all that? For sure you do. There's going to be questions on quizzes and tests that say list all the possibilities. So let's list them. My last guy is a six. It's a negative six. That's okay. We just write down factors. What would the factors be? One and a six, right? That'd be a positive one, where it's really negative six, right? So it'd be a positive one and a negative six or vice versa, a negative one and a positive six. And then we got two and three. Could be a positive two with a negative three or a negative two with a positive three. All right, and then that is over two. And there's only one way to get a two, which is a positive one, positive two, or negative one, negative two. Sweet, sweet. All right, so now we got to find all, all the possibilities. So we got plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus six, all over, plus or minus one, plus or minus two. All right, so let's go ahead and do our division. One divided by one. Ichi. One divided by two, one half. Okay, done with that. Then we're done with that. Two divided by one is two. Two divided by two is, ooh, two divided by two. Two divided by two is ichi. Do I have to list it out twice? No, you don't, but that guy's done. Three divided by one, which is three. Uh, three divided by two, which is three over two. That guy's done. And then six. Six divided by one is six. And then six divided by two, that's three. I already have three, so there's really... Um, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, six, twelve. Twelve possibilities. Oh, snap. I'm just going to hope I get super duper lucky. And let's see what could maybe work. I don't think a one is going to work. I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to try a negative two. I'm just looking at those terms there. And I've got a crazy suspicion that negative two might work. All right, so then we go 2, 1, negative 7, negative 6. And how do I know if it works? Well, Mr. Tanaka, if you get a zero for the remainder. All right, so here we go. Drop, splink, 2, negative 4, negative 3, 6. Darn it, that guy does not work. Negative 1, uh, that's a 2, and that's a negative 4. Splingy, spling, it does not work. All right, what could work? I'm trying to look at these numbers. No, a one's not going to work. What about a positive two? Would a positive two maybe work? Let's try a positive two. Okay, two, one, negative seven, negative six. And it, it could possibly sometimes, class, take this long. You could just keep on going. So, yes, yes, it worked. Um, I got zero for a remainder, which means positive two is a factor. If positive two is a factor, that means I can rewrite this as x minus two. Remember, positive two is a factor, which means it's a root, which means it would make it a zero. Okay, and then I rewrite this guy. Okay, that's no x, that's an x, and that's an x squared, so that would be two x squared 
plus 5x plus 3, and it's still equal to 0. Okay, right? This guy's done already. x equals 2. That's a rational root. It was right there. Sweet! All right, so now I just have to see if it's quadratic formula or not. If it's quadratic formula, I'm done so. Um, if it's not, I got to keep on find, finding those other rational roots or zeros or factors. Okay, we call them all the same thing. All right, so we do a little side work. X that out. Two times three is six. Five is five. Okay. Uh, all right, let's see. What works out here? Two times three. Oh, nice and easy. Job on easy. Two times three is positive six. Combine a two and a three, you get a five. Okay, case. All right, so let's go here. We got a 2x squared. Write down the first guy. Write down the last guy. Still equal to zero, right? But instead of writing a 5x, I'm going to put a plus 2x and a plus 3x, right? Okay, and then I'm going to group, group, separate them by a plus sign. What's common with these two guys right here? Well, a 2x is common with those two guys. So you got an x plus 1. Okay, and then you got a plus sign. What's common with a 3x and a 3? Well, 3 missed a t, and that's an x plus a 1. Oh, sweet! There's a term. There's a term. What's common? x plus 1. Spling, spling. What's left? A 2x and a plus 3. Okay, but then I got to finish this bad boy off, so let's go back to my sweet little greenage. All right, so there's one of my solutions, right? It was right there. Now my other one would be x plus 1 equals 0, which would be x equals negative 1. Was that over there? For sure it was. Yes. And then I just got one to go. 2x plus 3 equals 0, minus 3, minus 3. 2x equals negative 3, which would be x equals negative 3 over 2. Is Was that a possibility? All right. And you know what I, I have failed to mention, which is actually kind of cool, if I use this in the beginning... If I would have put this and did synthetic division, I would have got zero as a remainder. If I would have used this with synthetic division, I would have got zero as a remainder. That's why these guys are called rational roots. They give me zero as a remainder. Or they solve this, right? You plug this guy into these x's and you're going to get zero. You plug this guy into those x's, you're going to get zero. You plug this guy into those x's, you're going to get zero. Other guys, you will not get zero, okay? So that's why sometimes synthetic division can take a while. I don't know about you, but that felt pretty good. I felt pretty darn accomplished. Um, I don't know if it's going to turn to the next page before I give you the alohas. Uh, hopefully it does because there's some really good practice problems, but it doesn't matter. You just go to the website, you download that guy, and there's a lot of these other problems you can practice. We're going to go ahead and work on some things in the future of how you can check these guys in your calculatoras. Okay, so there's a way that you can get all of these answers to make sure you're good to go. But there they are. The only thing I see here causing some trouble, and hopefully you see is 13 and 12. What do you notice? There's an x squared missing. So remember, if I was to do synthetic division with either of those guys, you would have to put a zero in for the x squared. That's very, very important. Let's get back here. Alohas. Uh, let's get, oh yeah, see, so you can, this website's pretty awesome. You can go here and get all your notes, um, and all that good stuff. I will see you in class. I'll see you in the AM if you need some extra help. Aloha.